stars were in a certain position. You believe that, right? Okay, all right. Okay, those of you that can. I see a few of you that have your uh, uh, things open here. Okay. Okay, the time that you were born, the stars were in a certain position. And uh, they were there because your cosmic fingerprint had to be registered. Okay. This is why uh, if you've had, if I've done a native chart reading for any of you, that we ask for your date of birth, the time and where, because something happens when you're born. Something very powerful happens when you're born. And it is partially the movements of the heavens. And I'm gonna just tell you some of this. We've talked about some of these before and uh, the influence of the stars that are stamped upon you at birth, okay? That is one of the important things uh, uh, that comes with a birthday because the, the heavens have stamped on you, have imprinted upon your physical form something when you come out of the womb at that specific time that no one else has. Number two, you are the image of God. So that is the important of birthdays. Okay, although I don't celebrate, I'm gonna clarify that a little bit more later. I don't celebrate mine, but you are the image and likeness of God. Okay, that's another reason why it is important uh, uh, for you to maybe acknowledge your birthday. It is the realization that at this point, at this time, I brought forth the image and likeness of God in the earth, okay? Now, there's only one copy of you. You've heard it said before. It is true. Out of maybe nearly 8 billion people, there's only one copy of you. The heavens made sure of that. Your father genetics, your mother genetics helped to make sure of that with the 46 chromosomes that you have. Only one of you. And so what God is saying to us in that is, don't lose your identity. Don't lose your identity. One of the problems with most people in the world today, they don't know who they are, and especially with a lot of the younger people, you know, and they're becoming this or that. And there are all of these influencers that are on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, all of the social media, and they become lost and not knowing who they are because they're taking on other people's identity and they never fulfill their destiny and they revert back into a golem, like a soulless, empty shell of a being and their life becomes miserable. But your birthday was given to you so that you could be reminded that you are the image and likeness of God and that there is only one of you and that you came packaged with everything you need to fulfill that mission. The heavens itself was working with you to fulfill that mission to make sure that it would become a mission accomplished, all right? Now, uh, your ascendant, those of you that know about astrology and here, in case you're new, we deal with astrology, we talk about it, we teach it, we uh, do all of that, right? You have your sun sign. For example, if you were born today, the sun on the tropical zodiac chart would be in Virgo. So you would be a Virgo, right? And so now, but you not only have your sun sign, but you have your ascendant, your ascendant that is very important in knowing who you are because your ascendant is what was rising in the east at the exact time that you were born. This is why we ask what time were you born? What city, what state, what nation you were born in because we can chart that and figure out what exactly uh, 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 constellation was rising at that time because whatever the constellation was that was in your rising is going to make a very powerful impact upon your life it's going to make a very powerful impact on your life and we know the risings are like every two hours every two hours just like clockwork because there's this giant clock that is out there in the heavens that is called the zodiac so everything is moving like clockwork, but it's working for you and it is preparing you for your destiny. It is preparing you to fulfill what you came here to do. 
But if we get lost in trying to be like this person, that person, and look at all around and, and just get uh, consumed with all of the, the, the secular things, you never fulfill that because you never get to know who you are. There are some people that never become who they really are because they want to please maybe their mother, their father, or some other family members, or maybe a spouse. So they lose their identity in that, and their life becomes filled with uh, distress, discouragement, depression. You know, they're never happy. People are never happy many times because they're not doing what they are called to do. They're not doing what they're called to do. And most people don't take the time, even spiritual people many times, don't take the time to find out what do I need to do. Instead, we become triggered by the events in our life and we might jump around here or there this person or that person, this relationship, that relationship, or whatever. and so, and we find ourselves going in circles because we have not stood still to hear the counsel of God that is within your heart to let you know what you need to be doing. Okay, and we have to go through this whole thing until we get there. Because remember, there was a contract that you made. Okay, there was an agreement that you have, and so you have to fulfill that <clears throat> so this is um we're talking about the reasons why uh your birth date is important number one because the heavens have been programmed the stars have been programmed for that specific time that you were born whether you know the time or not whether you have a birth certificate or not it was programmed for you the influence of the stars was stamped on you at birth Number two, because you are the image and the likeness of God that is here in the earth. There's only one copy of you. You have a unique cosmic fingerprint. That's why it doesn't matter if you have a twin, identical twin. There are some things that's different because each second matters when the heavens are moving and the degrees of the heavens, your, ari your rising or ascending sign and your descending sign, which will be direct, uh, directly opposite of your ascending. All has a place. Now, with your ascending sign, when you were born, this is showing you what you're going to express in life. The person that's going to be seen, for example, you know, you may have Scorpio ascending or you may have Pisces ascending or whatever, you know, and whatever that sign is at your ascent, that's going to become a big part of your personality. That's what you're gonna integrate into and it's gonna become a part of your first house, the house of self, how you express yourself. Whether you understand the heavens or not, it's going to happen because there has been an imprint upon you, an influence by the heavens that the most high God has given to you, okay? And it's about your specific identity. It's about how you project yourself to the world. How are you projecting yourself to the world? Okay. Now, this not does not mean that you are always wondering, okay, like how I look, how they think, how I look like. No, 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 no. It's that internal identity that is projecting out of you. What do people see when they see you? What do they see when they read you? Because, you know, you are living epistles right of men. Number one, as a spiritual person, are they seeing a Christ expression? Or are they seeing something that looks no different from the world? Hmm, maybe I need to say that one again. Okay. <laughs> are they seeing a Christ or godly expression? Or are they seeing something that looks just like out there, all right? And so your expression, what you are projecting, what you have been given from the universe, from the most high God to project overall is to manifest the Christ. Your manifestation and expression of the Christ won't be the way that I manifest and express the Christ. It's going to be the way the Christ is working within you the spirit that is working within you, his will and to do according to his good pleasure within your life. But it is up to us to find out what that is. 
it's up to us to walk in that, all right? Instead of getting sidetracked by all of these things here. Now, um, hmm. your descendant is in the West, your ascendant is in the East. The descendant is gonna represent the type of people that you will attract to your life because of your birth date, because of the date that you was born. It's showing exactly the type of people that you will be attracting to your life, all right? Now, um, you read in the Bible, it says that the Magi's, they saw his star. Whoa, they saw Yeshua's star and they followed the star and that's how they found where he is. Now, the scripture clearly says it was his star. Now, we understand that there was a conjunction that was taking place with Venus. We understand that the time of his birth, that the sun was in Libra. OK, not in Capricorn, the way that the Western and Christianity, you know, screwed everything up and stuff. But the sun was in uh, was in Libra and the, the ruling planet of Libra is Venus. I'm telling you this for a reason here. Right now, Libra is the scales. OK. The scales, the balance that comes, that he is the just one, he is justice and righteousness right but the ancient name for the constellation of libra it was the altar i don't want to go further into that but uh, the ruling planet was venus and that is the planet of love and yeshua is love and when they saw his star the scripture clearly says there was like the bright and morning star which is venus why am i telling you this just as yeshua had a star that was called his star. I believe that each and every one of us have a star also. And let me just check my computer here to make sure it is not going to go off here. I believe that each of us have a star that you were given. And I mean a literal star, a literal star. There are trillions and trillions of stars out there and i believe that in your ascendant in your ascendant one of the stars for example if pisces was your ascending is is your ascending sign one of the stars that make up the pisces constellation represents your star now i'm not going deeper into that i'm just giving you some little clues how this works and how especially if you know anything about magic or how people use what is called the dark magic or black magic and things like that. There are certain people that can see your star. And because they see your star based on when you were born, even though they may not necessarily know the date and the time of your birth, but because of intuition and uh, the ability to see, you can sometimes see a person's star. And you may not even necessarily know the name of that star. Now, the scripture says in Psalms 147, I believe in verse four, it says that God numbers the stars and he called them all by their name. He called them all by their name. And so just for the sake of further understanding this, there could be a star out there by the name of John Lewis. Okay, this specific John Lewis out of all of the thousands of John Lewis, there could be one out there by the name of Sharon, could be one out there by the name of Augusta, White Cloud, Maya, Gina, okay, uh, who else can I see, Vivian, there could be a star out there by that name, okay. Now, people that are dealing with the negative side and other things and stuff that see the star, there are certain things that can be done to prevent that star from shining or to prevent the influence of that star from continually impacting your life. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Just to back up here, okay, when your parents got together, all right, and your father released that light force in the, in the form of sperm and it connected with that egg, it had all the data within it, okay? And then after that, after some time, about seven weeks, something happened that activated that data and it went from a golem, from a, a soulless empty shell, a mass 
uh, with no direction, with no form to a living soul within the physical body. Okay. Now that child has been born and during the time of that birth, the heavens were in a specific position and there were influences from the heavens being exerted specifically targeted, directed to that specific child, okay? Because that's the way the Most High does things, right? Now, but say that someone sees that star, okay, understands that, or even maybe understand, this is why some people don't uh, even, the, uh, you know, with uh, astrology or whatever, uh, it is, you know, you, you may not want to give your birth date to everyone, you know, and the time. Now, of course, if you need a, a reading, an accurate reading, you got to give that. But you may want to know who you're giving it to, because if you're giving it to someone that could have some nefarious ideas and stuff and uh, may be working on the other side, they can take that information and word curse, if you will, that star, that constellation of whatever, and I believe Prophet and Sharon and I were talking about this last week, okay, can, uh, can, 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 can do certain things with that. Therefore, the influence of that star upon your life will not fully manifest and it will begin to grow dim, okay? It will begin to grow dim. And so you won't shine the way that you were designed to shine because of what, like a White Cloud was saying, he was in this, uh, at this event during the ceremony and that there were some manifestations that took place, some voices and some other things that was happening there. This is why you as a spiritual person, you know, you can't just go everywhere that you want to go. You can if you want to, right? But, you know, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God, okay? In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. You'll know where to go. Not because of being afraid of anything, because you have the Christ within you and greater is he that's within you than he that is in the world. And you're more than a conqueror and all of that. But if you go into some territory and you are not fully clothed with the armor of God and don't have the power within you, you are putting yourself or whoever you may be bringing in a in a precarious situation that can cause harm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay. And so now we talked about this. So now he, he calls the stars by their name. And so there are people that can speak into the stars, just like we, those of you that I've done uh, readings for, I think practically every person I, I, I pray during that time. And if, especially if I am seeing something that could be negative, I speak into that and reverse it. I speak into that and reverse it because we have the power to do that. Now, most astrologers don't because they don't understand. They're just using mundane astrology. They have studied for it or whatever like that. I've never studied for it or anything like that. And But I know who I am. I know about the power of God that's within me. And so uh, that I not only just read the heavens, but I have visions, I see, right? And so it gives me an, uh, I, something extra there, kind of like the uh, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, uh, and Abednego, and Daniel there. You had all of the court astrologers and, and magicians there. They could read the heavens. They were experts in it. But Daniel and those three guys, they had the anointing. They had the anointing. And so they were not only just astrologers, but they were uh, uh, stargazers, which means that by looking at the heavens, they not only read what it is saying, but they had a vision to go along with it and had the ability to change things. Do you hear what I'm saying? And so your birth date, the date that you was born is very important because a lot of things happen that day that sets your whole life up, okay? And I'm gonna just go here now that you are born, remember I told you that before you even got here, there was a struggle, right? Okay, and but you won and you did become, you did begin to manifest and grow. And so now after nine months, or if you're early, you came early, you are born. And the scripture says in Job 14 and one, man that is born of a woman is of a few days and full of trouble. 
<laughs> so now you had a struggle coming here, all right? And going through the process of being developed, moving from a golem to a living spirit, and now you have been birthed, you've come through that tunnel to see the light, right? You come out from the heavenly realm. Now you're in this earth realm and now there is trouble. That word trouble there in Hebrew, also Aramaic, it means anger, rage, frustration, anxieties, and all of these things. Now, how is it that a, a, a man or a child or human, Adam, that's the word that is used there, born of an Isha, a woman, a female, and just within a few days, there is all kinds of negativity and trouble can manifest. This here's this innocent child. And you know that some children are born with horrible diseases, horrible problems and things that happen in childbirth and things that, uh, uh, can happen, you know, all of these things that are there. How is it that man born of a woman in a few days is full of trouble? Now, we do understand that later on in life, you can get into trouble, okay? But within a few days, and it's full of trouble, of turmoils and things that are happening. I'm going to show you this. Most time, because there was no birth ritual. Okay, how many of you still here tonight? Okay, let me see. Most times because there was no birth ritual. There was no birth ritual done, okay, at the birth of that child. And I'm gonna show you a birth ritual that I found out many, many years ago from reading the scripture. And I did it with my kids and stuff. That's not to say that you they would never have a problem or anything like that. But I'm going to show you a scripture here in the book of Ezekiel chapter 16. So if you got that, you can kind of go to that Ezekiel chapter 16. Let me see what I can do here. And look at that also. Okay. Give me one second here. And I'm going to read it here. Okay, Ezekiel 16. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I just want to just touch on uh, just a few points here just to show you this here. Okay, so now it says um, in verse 4, And as for your nativity, in the day that you were born, your navel was not cut, neither were you washed in water to cleanse you. You was not salted at all, nor swallowed. You were not salted at all or swallowed. Now, there was a reason for this. And although this was an allegory regarding uh, this nation here and showing them that they have, when you read this, you'll find that, that God tells them that, you know, I think he says your, your uh, I think he says your father was a uh, was an Amorite, your mother was a Hittite. And so he's speaking allegorically of the things that they had gone through because of their rebellion, because they were no longer walking in the identity of a chosen people to manifest the image of God in earth. And so now he was liking them to, you know, look like you were born from an Amorite. Those were the Nephilims, <laughs> the Hittites. Those are the Nephilims. And he says, it seems like you are a hybrid, you know, because you're not living the way that you were designed to live. You don't know who you are. You don't know who you are. He says that you were like a, a child that was born that, that, uh, that the unbiblical core, umbi umbilical cord, that wasn't cut properly, it was just cut off, but it was just hanging there and you were thrown there in the field. You weren't washed and you weren't salty, you weren't swaddled. No one had compassion on you and you were covered in your blood and you were dying. And that is also an allegory for the way we were without Christ. And some of us know that our lives were really all messed up. <clears throat> some of us had been um, rejected by parents or abandoned by parents and did not, uh, they did not want us, but he passed by and he saw us. And what did he say? Live, live, live. I don't wanna get into that part here. I wanna just touch on this, that he says you were not salted at all. Why would people salt their children? 
The purpose for salt, and let me just deal with just some of the very basic reasons and stuff. When a child was born at that time, and even in this time, in many uh, cultures where people do understand uh, what is happening here, uh, you know, number one, you want to harden the skin of this newborn baby. That skin is so soft and everything. So you want to put salt on it. That's going to kind of like help it to just not, it's going to yet be soft and everything, but it won't just maybe tear or scratch so easily because you have salted that child, right? Okay. And it was also to keep from maybe certain bacterias and other things uh, that could attach itself to the child. And so they would do that. But most of all, most of all, that these babies were salted because uh, they knew that they were uh, God's image and likeness and that there were forces there that was seeking to steal their destiny. Did you hear what I'm saying? That there were people there that maybe saw their star and that call that could cause their star not to shine, that could create problems for them in the spirit world. There were people that could uh, release a word curse or do certain magic and stuff and this child has problems all of his life and don't even know why, what's going on. Because of something that happened from birth. Because of, you know, and some of you, I've talked to some of you and, and uh, there and stuff, some of you, you came from backgrounds and stuff where uh, family members were a part of various types of negative, you know, occult powers and stuff and things of that sort, working on the dark side, if you will, and stuff. And so all of those things like that. But you know what? Even in this time, now, even if your parents were not practicing things or involved with negative stuff that could create some type of demonic disruption in your life, if you go to the hospital to have a baby and stuff, you don't know that nurse, you don't know that doctor, you don't know all of those people that's all around that is touching that child and what may happen or what could happen. You don't know who may be a practicing Satanist that is there working in the hospital and that can see and that's looking for spiritual born kids and is looking to just corrupt something and to speak negative things over and uh, pass transfer something through the church. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Okay. And so you don't know. They didn't know about all of the midwives or maybe some person that was jealous and maybe they couldn't have any children and they were jealous because this woman had a child, had a son and they couldn't have any. And so they could have put a curse on this child here. So that life was going to be messed up or it could have been uh, of a royal seed uh, and that they didn't want to manifest. And so some negative things could have been spoken over. And so when he says here that you were not salted, this is what he was talking about. No curses was broken off your life. You were, there was no protection put in place at the time of your birth. Although you came here from light, you came from your very, very beginnings was light, and you had all the data, all the information, all the power, all the God for <coughs> within you as you were developing. And 49 days later, something happened. That spark of light came forth within you where you became a living soul and although you were born and stuff with all of this and the and the, the heavens were smiling on you as it were your star was influencing you your personal star but if something was not done for that child at birth or around birth things that were designed to happen to help you and to benefit you and to cause you to become this great and powerful person that you are could have could have gotten delayed may not happen something may go on awry and so that was what that was one of the main purposes in case someone had an evil eyes they call it over in the east or, or in the middle east and in, and in parts of africa in case someone had an evil and so you would put salt on that child and so this was to rebuke all of that now you know that even in the japanese culture today the sumo wrestlers before they wrestle what do they do they throw salt 
because they understand the power of salt. And it's not just superstition, but it is something that is real. The power of salt that breaks curses. You guys have heard me talk about the salt covenant and things like that before and stuff. So when they go into the ring, they don't know if their opponent has gone to the uh, shaman or witch doctor or whatever and gotten a spell cast on him and he doesn't know if the same thing so they both throw salt at each other right and it's breaking the curses on both sides because they understand the power of the salt and so um and so i know that you know many of you have kids and your kids are already born maybe or whatever like that but this is something that you can do we're going to talk about this in a little bit later that you can yet perform this ritual over your children you can matter of fact perform it over you and we're going to do it maybe at the end of this session here just to show you the power of salt and stuff now i'm i don't i'm not here to try to make you demon conscious or think that you're under some type of spell or curse or to blame what has happened in your life uh, uh, on some curse or whatever, but I'm just showing you the meaning of scripture here and that there are things that are happening uh, beyond our human understanding and we don't even know about and we wonder why we're going through life and this is happening, that is happening, you know, marriage or relationships or finances and other things and sometimes, not every time, but sometimes it could be because of what was done as a child, something that was spoken as a child. But thanks be to God, we have the power of the Holy Ghost to speak and to break and to undo anything that's been done. I could tell you many, many stories about using the salt in the past and stuff. Uh, you know, I had some people come after me. Some of you've heard this story before. Two story. They're in C when I was living in Seattle, and I was, uh, you know, prophesying quite a bit of things and stuff, posting it on my website atam.org. And some people didn't like it, you know. And I about it, whatever. I came home from a trip and uh, missions somewhere overseas, and I saw my mailbox, this you know, bag and everything. And I thought, ooh, somebody's blessed me. I hope this is a bag of money. Hope it's a bag of money, right? <laughs> so I get up in my room and uh, I'm unpacking and everything. And I start to open up this pouch here and all of this dust and stuff come out and ashes come out. So someone has burned some stuff. They've done a ritual. Then they, uh, I read this little thing where they tell me what's going to happen to me and all of this other stuff, right? Because of this or that or whatever, they don't agree with me. And so, you know, uh, because I don't fear that stuff and I understand it. And, uh, you know, I just placed it there on my altar for about a week and danced around it, you know, <laughs> and, and undid everything that was done. And uh, so since they saw that that didn't work, this is a true story. Some of you have heard me tell this many years ago. And some of you that were in Washington State and stuff heard me tell it there. Okay. And uh, they came out to my house. They drove across country to my house. I didn't know what they looked like or who, whatever, you know. They didn't really know what I looked like either because I didn't have my picture on my website for certain reasons, right? <laughs> but I did had the mistake of putting my home address on my website. <laughs> Open the door one day and here's these two ladies come in, you know, to, and they look very, uh, very, they look what I would call like, kind of like, you know, the Pentecostals, you know, or Apple socks, long dress, got a big bun wrapped up here on their head. And they're saying, are you, you know, Prophet Jones, you know I mean, they look me up and down. Are you sure? Yes, I'm me, I'm me, right? And a uh, long story shorter, uh, they, uh, I was giving them some tea and, talking to them and I felt something. And I had called some some people, I said, pray, I said, something is about to happen. I don't know what it is. It's not good. But these hairs on my neck and my back is standing up and that's letting me know that this ain't good. I said, I got two women here, right? Long story shorter, uh, as we're sitting at the table, one began to pronounce these curses on me and uh, from across the table and without even thinking and unconsciously, you know, I just began to speak in this deep Holy Ghost tone and began to speak in tongues and began to reverse that. And I don't even remember all that I said. And I hit the table. This is the truth. I hit the table. And when I hit the table, there was a force, a power that came forth and the chairs flew back by themselves with the women in them. One of them weighed about 200 pounds. And so, and the chairs flew back and scared them. It startled me. 
And uh, the Holy Ghost said, get the salt. I got my salt and I began to assault them with the salt. Literally chased them out of my house. <laughs> that is a true story. That is a true story. Long story even shorter, I come to find out that uh, one of the ladies had a gun and they had actually killed some people. Some of you have heard me tell the story before and I posted on the website what was going to happen to them within a certain amount of time. I'm explaining this to you because, see, the curse can't come without a cause. So if someone decides that they want to be big and bad enough to try to curse you as a righteous person of God and there is no cause, you have the authority to reverse. And salt is a very powerful weapon. It is a very powerful weapon. Well, but it's a little mineral, it's a little crystal. You know? Very powerful weapon, okay? And uh, I told what would happen. And uh, it was all, it all came out. I got a phone call from a person in their state that happened to read my website also. And she worked for the media and said that, do you want to know what happened to this person, this person? I was trying to remember the name. And she said, aren't you the one that, you know, curse, put a curse on them. I'm going, well, no, I didn't really put a curse on them. I just only, you know, because I was kind of, you know, this is what I'm going to tell you what happened. And so within the amount of time that I said would happen, those things happened. One of the bodies shut down. Everything just stopped working. And they did confess. One of them did confess. One is in jail today because they had committed murder. And my point was they came with intents, you know, to, to kill. And she says, well, you're lucky to be alive because of this, this, and this. My point is that, you know, no weapon formed against you can prosper. And so when I'm talking about this and talking about word curses or things that can happen uh, with your star and stuff, once you know who you are, you can reverse everything that may have been spoken over your life or placed on you. You can reverse it. Matter of fact, if you know someone that is doing something, you can say, return to sender. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you understanding what I'm saying here? It feels like I'm, feels like I'm talking to myself. I don't know. I, I know Sister Augusta is out there. She's, she's there. Vivian is there. I see a few others here that may be getting this and stuff. Okay, I told you we we're going to be talking about some things that uh, here. So now with the salt, the salt is programmable. God says no one had washed you with salt. Salt is programmable. It's a crystal. It is a transmitter. It is a receiver. So you can actually talk to it and give it a command. And the information that you put in that salt, it will happen. It will happen. I remember many years ago, I used to um, give out packages of salt, little small, you know how you, you know, go and get them like we have in the, in the restaurants and stuff. I would go and get them at the place and get hundreds of them. I would go into my meetings and I would teach on this and I would break curses, pray over the salt. And we saw a lot of people. We saw people come to Christ. We saw uh, husbands that had been abusers and really way out there turn to God and uh, other things happen, you know, because of the power of the salt. And so when he's speaking this here, he's speaking something very powerful. And we're going to do this in just a little while. But just to give you one other little uh, example of how powerful the salt is, that uh, there's a scripture in, I believe it is in Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles 13. And you'll find that here's this king. This king is uh, named Jehoram. And he is coming against the king Abiah, okay, of Judah. And, uh, and the king Jehoram has 800,000 men of war. And the other one only have half of that amount. And just as they were about to go into battle, King Abiah says, hey, let me just read it to you here. Let me just read it to you here. I'm in teaching mode tonight, taking it slow because I want you to get this and uh, understand and understand what we're saying here. Okay, second. Chronicles, let me find it here. Chapter 13. And he says this here as they are just about to get it on. Verse 4. And Abiah stood up upon Mount Zemaram, okay, 
And which means, by the way, it means like double portion. You have to stand in that place of blessing. You have to know that you are the head and not the tail, okay? Which is in the hill country of Ephraim, which again means fruitful. And he says, listen to me, Jeroboam and all Israel. Ought you not to know that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingdom over, uh, over Israel to David forever, even to him and to his sons by a covenant of salt? Do you see that? Do, do you understand what I'm saying here? I'm talking about a king with all of his generals and his military facing off with another king with a bigger army that's about to destroy them. And he stops and he says, don't you realize that there is a covenant, a salt covenant that God gave to the house of David? Okay, that's the Davidic covenant. It was a, a, a salt covenant and that it will not be wiped out. It will not be destroyed, that you cannot prosper in your efforts against me. He said, you should know this. You should know this. He said it was a covenant of salt. You have to read to find the rest of the story of the slaughter of the enemy that took place because he stood on that word with the salt. Just the salt, okay. All right, now, so um, he said this, looking back at Ezekiel. No one was there to do that. Now, I'm going to come back to that in a second, but I'm going to go a little bit further here just to show you how everything has been twisted. Everything has been twisted. Okay. The way birthdays are celebrated. Okay. Nowadays. Now, I'm not telling anybody to do anything. I'm not telling anyone to do anything. At the beginning of this message, I told you that there's not a person on here. It doesn't matter how long you've known me. And some of you have known me for a few decades or so. You've never known me to celebrate my birthday. Okay. Matter of fact, you don't even know what day it is. Most of you don't. And uh, it's because I don't celebrate it the way everyone celebrates it. And when I was just a kid, basically, I think I just turned 20 human years old. You know, it wasn't that long ago. And, uh, and spirit reveals something to me. He reveals something to me. And he said, as long as you acknowledge age, you will continue to be aging. Okay. You'd be tied to this. Now, I didn't know there was no science or anything. There was no internet or Google or anything like that. And so, but at that point, I stopped even acknowledging age unless I had to for the authorities. I'm traveling to different countries or whatever like that, or police push over or something like that. Otherwise, I don't even acknowledge age. Why? Number one, your birthday was given to you and to celebrate each year, not to acknowledge age. Ooh, I know that's different, huh? That's different, huh? You haven't heard that before. It was, it was given to you so that you would not acknowledge age. Now, it was a reminder that you matter to God. That is the purpose for your birthday. It doesn't matter. Now, you can do whatever you want. But I'm just telling you the true purpose. And I'm, because it is very spiritual, once you understand that, as I said before, even before you came here, there was a struggle. After you was born, man born of a woman in a few days is full of trouble and things that is happening. So your birthday is given to remind you that you matter to God and that you are not an accident. It doesn't matter how you came. If you are a child of rape, if you are a, uh, a person that was abused physically, sexually, emotionally growing up, if you were abandoned, left out in the field, just as with this scripture here, covered in your own blood and all kinds of things happen to you, you know, he has passed by you and he said, live. And he covered you with his robe of righteousness. So none of that matters. And so each year that come around is to remind you that I matter to God. Now, I want to just like open up somebody's uh, uh, mic here. And I want uh, everyone that can and will shout out, I matter to God. I matter to God. 
matter to God. I matter to God. I matter to God. I matter to God. Okay, you matter to God. Okay, now I want you to just say this here. I want you to say, I am not a mistake or an accident. Exactly. I am, I'm not, not, I am, not, I am mistake not a mistake or an accident. I am not a mistake or an accident. I am not a mistake or an accident. Excellent. 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 That is the purpose for your birthday. It is a reminder. It is a reminder. It is a reminder, okay? Now, uh, it is also a reminder that you won. You've already won. You're already victorious, okay? I want everybody to just to, that can to shout out, I won. 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 And all you have to do is think about what you had to do to get here even before you got here. You know, you had that 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 sperm wars that was going on. You had all of that, all of the acid that was melting, all of those other guys all around you, and you were able to make it through that. And some of you may have just lodged there in the walls of the vagina or fallopian tube for maybe three to four to five days because you can live up to five days in there before it got there to the egg. And you won. You won. You, I mean, you won. I mean, that was a whole lot of effort, which shows you that you are a powerful being. You are more powerful than you realize. You're more powerful than you realize. You're more important than you realize. And God made sure of that by allowing the heavens to uh, agree with that and to complement that at the time of your birth, that there was something specifically happening only for you, that all of heaven itself were your star, Sean, okay? Because you matter, okay? Now, um, your birthday was given so that you could renew your contract. Okay. If those of you that every year, if you have a birthday coming up, if you try, to, well, you will have a birthday coming up, whether this year or next year, whenever, you know, your next birthday, I want you to take time to think about your contract. What contract? that you made to come here at this time. You may not know all of the fine prints, all the details of it and stuff, but you are here on a mission and that mission is possible. And so during your birthday, I want you to think about that. Think about that, renew that contract during your solar return and disconnect yourself from linear time. Disconnect yourself from linear time. Oh, I'm one year older now. Oh, I'm 35, I'm 46, 78, I'm getting on up there. Okay. Those of you, if you pay attention, that's in our Telegram group or whether Facebook or whatever, when I celebrate with you your birthday, I always say, I always say, live forever. There's a reason why I say that. Because even though I understand that everyone, you know, most people like to celebrate their birthdays, but they don't realize that they are putting a spell on themselves. They don't realize the witchcraft that they're working on themselves by saying certain things and doing certain things. And so I try to counter that and I say, live forever and prosper. And for some of you, I say that you are ageless, you're immortal, you are eternal. I need somebody to nod your head at me if you, if you remember that, if you've seen that many times. You, you hear me say that all the time. Just go back and look over the things. I always say that, and I say that for a reason, because I am trying to undo what you are unconsciously doing. <laughs> when I celebrate my kid's birthday and stuff like that, I tell them you are ageless, you're immortal, and you are eternal. 
And so now, from now on, those of you celebrating your birthday and stuff, disconnect from linear, linear time. What's going to happen when you disconnect from linear time? You're going to stop aging. <laughs> you're going to stop aging. The aging process has to slow down because you're no longer acknowledging it. The more you speak that number, I'm 55, 45, 35, you are reinforcing that age. Therefore, it must manifest on your countenance and within your body. The power of life and death is in your tongue. That's why I don't celebrate my birthday the way that most people do. Most people don't even know when is that. I don't do the happy birthday thing or anything like that because I know something that was revealed to me many, many years ago, you know, at my 20th. And I never even before then hardly uh, celebrated because, because of shyness, right? I had uh, siblings that uh, birthdays were within the same uh, within a 30 day period of mine and I would tell my mom uh, to celebrate it on their day. That was just within me. I didn't know why, you know, just before I came to my Christ experience, right? And so your birthday is to remind you that you matter to God, that you're not an accident, that you, your, your struggle started before you got here and that you won, that you were born a winner, that you are always victorious. It is a time to renew your contract to think and meditate that I came here for a reason and I cannot leave until it is fulfilled. And you can even say, I'm not coming back again because I'm gonna fulfill it, right? <laughs> okay. And it uh, is a time to disconnect from linear time. You disconnect from linear time by stopping acknowledging, stop acknowledging what we call age because all of that is in the realm of time. And time is an illusion. It is not real. There is nothing new under the sun because of the illusion of time. But above the sun is everything is new. You don't know it. everything is spontaneous. There is nothing because it represents the realm of spirit. I'm not talking about as in geography or cosmology or anything like that. We're talking spiritual language, okay? Because in that realm, when you uh, are, have been raised up to be seated in heavenly places, as Ephesians chapter two say, you come into a realization that you're not subject to the beggar element. And the more you realize that, and the more you internalize that, the more that will manifest within your life, okay? And so you will be less, less influenced more and more by that. Therefore, the soul will return, as it were, has less effect on you, and the disease of aging has to be halted and eventually completely healed. Did you realize that aging is a disease? Okay. It is a disease, just like cancer, diabetes, or whatever. All of that is a disease, and it came from Genesis 3 in this specific creation here. Okay, After Genesis 3, that's when it was introduced because the death gene was turned on. Not only the death gene was turned on, but the aging genes. Do you realize that you have about 30 to 40 genes in your body? You have a cluster of genes that controls your aging process, how your body will age. There are some, I don't remember the name of the disease now, but there are some children that are born and that, that cluster of genes has been triggered. And so they age extremely fast. And so within about five years or so, they could be looking like they're 70, 80 years old and their bones deteriorate horrible disease, but it's, it's because of what's been turned on in their genome, okay? And then, but there are other genes that are there that are called the silent Saturian genes. They call them silent because they hardly ever get turned on. And they didn't know what they were about till, till you know, over the last maybe decade or so. And those are the genes that reverse the aging process, Saturian genes, they're called. And those genes are activated by not eating. Did you catch that? They're activated by not eating. So the less you eat, the more they begin to be activated. When you are fasting, 
especially when you get to like say uh, third day fast with water only, your body goes into uh, autophagy where it is eating up all of the dead cells and stuff. And it's literally, re your body is renewing itself, okay? And as you go further into that, the aging process reverses. This is why you find people that live a fasted life, you know, they seem to look younger. Didn't he say that he would renew your youth like the eagle? So what does the eagle do? What does the eagle do to look new and young all the time? At the time that the eagle is getting older and the feathers are hanging and uh, everything like that, he breaks off his beak so that he won't eat. <laughs> goes down to the river and he bangs it upon a rock until it's broken off. So to make sure that he's not going to eat some of us, we need to break off our beak because we're constantly, okay, over, over eating. All right. I'm not making fun of anybody. Okay. And so, but he breaks off his beak. And so, and he has to wait until it grows back. You know, it's not these, and he plucks off all of the uh, loose feathers during the water. And so you can't even tell how old that eagle is because he's been renewed, because something happened genetically at a metabolic level within him by not eating. The same with humans. Something happens within you when you eat less or under eat. Okay, we're talking about birthday. Happy birthday to you. So it's not about aging. It's not about aging. But what we have now, we have in this Western uh, understanding in modern day, we have we have inserted that and as a matter of fact it came from the greeks the greeks way 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 back and stuff anybody ever heard of artemis artemis that was the goddess of the moon the goddess of hunting the goddess of childbirth and many other things and stuff she was right okay and how many know that that the greek uh pantheon of gods they're equivalent to what the bible called the nephilims they were the demigods, right? That's what they were, right? And so what the people would do, they would bake a round cake. Literally, this is true. You can find it, you know, and they would put candles on it. And they would have a ritual to Artemis. And they would wish or they would pray to her. And then they would blow out the candles. So this is not something new. And then so around the, uh, I think 1800s, around 1890s or so, there was these two uh, sisters. What was their name? I wrote it down. I was doing some, but Patty and Mildred Hill, around 1890 or so, uh, they developed the song, happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you. It was actually first Good morning to all, good morning to all. But then it evolved to happy birthday to you. This is just the history of it. And then the forming of a circle, somebody say a ritual, okay? And putting candles, turning lights off, putting candles, somebody say ritual, sounds like a seance, right? And then making a wish or praying, the same thing that they did thousands of years ago, all right? and blowing out the candles. So you've basically already enchanted yourself because you have already activated that aging again within you for another year because you have acknowledged that and you have solidified it out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, some much more, in a circle. Why a circle? Because that's where you have this momentum of power. You ever heard of prayer circles? You ever been into a meeting where they form a circle and hold hands because there is this power that is moving through there when you are praying that way? Those on the dark side, they do the same thing. They form a circle and they hold hands and they contain that power that they are releasing within that circle that whoever is speaking uh, out from that circle, it is empowering those words that's being spoken. And so when you're saying, you know, how old are you? Okay. And then you are, you know, 45 years old. So now you got all of that energy from all the people that are there celebrating you. And you have accelerated your aging process within your physical body because your cells and everything else heard it. And it has to be so because you spoke it and you spoke it as a ritual.
Did you hear what I'm saying? So you wonder why I don't celebrate my birthday, why I never celebrate and do all that. These are the reasons uh, why. These are the reasons why. All right. Now, so, um, but now I've showed you this. Let me check the time here. I'm talking slow. It's right at the top of the hour. So I'm going to wrap this up. <clears throat> And I know some of you may have some questions. We will get to those also. But um, <clears throat> this is why uh, your birthday is the most vulnerable time for you spiritually. Your birthday is the most vulnerable time for you spiritually because you're having a solar return. Because the day that you were born, there were specific angels and spirits, guides assigned to you that day, that day, okay? Can I go a little bit further? There were not only specific angels assigned to you, guides assigned to you, but from the other side, there were certain antagonizers. You can call them evil spirits or demons that were assigned during your lifespan. And so if you strayed from this uh, contract, or if you, using Christian terminology, transgressed, you got out of the territory where you were covered because remember David said that, you know, you covered me in my mother's womb. So you got out from that covering so something can happen, you know, because there are these forces that are there that can make it happen because now you're in their territory. And so right around the birthday, and I'm not, I don't want to plant any types of seeds in, in, uh, into anybody's mind and stuff, but I believe that if you look back over the years and stuff, you'll find that some of you went through some major challenges just before your birthday, on the birthday, and just a few days or so after the birthday, because there was a whole lot of spiritual activity going on. And so uh, your birth is leading up to your birth is a time that to be praying maybe even fasting, connecting with spirit, drawing upon this energy because you're having your soul return and your star, that influence is shining upon you just as the Magi saw his star, okay? And they came over, but that star is manifesting there to help you through that next year. All of this energy is there to help you through your next year. Also, you might notice that uh, uh, if you have a dream, especially the day or two before your birthday, you want to make sure you write it down because that is a great time where prophetic dreams and insight will come just before the birthday and the day after. Now, you can have them every night. You can have them all the time, but especially during that time, and if you pay close attention to your dream just before the birthday or just after the birthday, that dream many times will be giving you information of what it's going to be taking place throughout that next year. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Okay. And so I want to do a little, just uh, we're here on this. And so we're very limited. If I were like in a conference somewhere, I would do it differently and stuff, but I believe that we can uh, do it. How many of you have some salt with you? Okay. You don't need a whole lot. You don't need a whole lot. Your salt is programmable. This is, um, these are, this is a mineral. This is, these are crystals. It comes out of the earth that God has uh, created. You are the salt of the earth and it's programmable. You can program your salt to break off curses and other things that may be on your life or things that may have been placed on your life. Now, I know many of us have already gone through all types of uh, uh, deliverance and things. And so I am not trying to bring up something that has already been dealt with. So understand that, okay? But uh, but for the sake of understanding this, what we're talking about tonight, since the scripture says that there was no one there to salt you, okay, after you was born, we're going to pray specifically, and we're going to use salt, and you can, you know, hold the salt in your hand, and you can, uh, you know, rub it in your hand, you can rub it on your face, you can rub it on your body, you can do whatever you want with it when we pray this prayer. You can also, if you have children, you know, uh, if not now, 
later you can go and you can pray over them with salt. If you have grandchildren, you can pray over them with salt. And when you do this, what you want to do is in your mind, in your consciousness, you want to go back to the time that they were small when they were born, you know, and visualize that as in speaking. Because see, in the realm of spirit, there is no such thing as time because time is an illusion that is all underneath the sun. But in the realm of spirit, there is no time. So you can go back at that and undo things that may have been already set in place to manifest in your children or grandchildren's life or those young people that may be around you. Those are just some things you can do. You don't have to. I'm just only giving you some examples of how to do certain things to uh, to create uh, that life that the Most High designed for you because you came here with everything that you need. But along the way, there are things that can happen. Man born of a woman in of a few days is full of trouble. Things that will distract you from your purpose. People that will distract you from your purpose. Now, let me just balance this. Just because we do this ritual here and, uh, and undo some things, it doesn't mean that, oh, well, now I don't have anything to do. No, uh-uh, no, no, no. This is to quicken within you, is to make you aware so that now you can see maybe things in your life, lifestyles, people that you need to cut yourself off from. Can you hear what I'm saying? Because see, some people, they get it twisted. Oh, the prophet said this or whatever. We pray the prayer so I can just continue on. No, it doesn't work that way. <laughs> you know, deliverance and, and things of that sort, breaking of curses doesn't work that way. When Jesus ministered healing and deliverance, what did he say? Go and sin no more. In other words, if there is something that is not in line with spirit in your life, move away from that, change that. He says, or else something worse will come upon you. And see, a lot of people don't understand that. They don't realize they go through deliverance. And we were talking about this the other day. Deliverance after deliverance. They're always getting delivered and stuff because they do really get delivered and stuff. But then they don't take the time to go through the healing process. And healing sometimes is a process to take place. They don't take the time to renew their mind. To renew their mind. Okay. God can heal, deliver, and work a miracle. And whew, all at once, it's just a whole new you know, situation for you and stuff, but there's something that you must do to maintain that. Are you understanding what I'm saying? And so that's a lot that sometimes is not really uh, just taught or explained, you know, in uh, what we do. And we just go out think, oh, it's done, it's done. No, it, it is done, it is done. But uh, what did Yeshua say? He says that when the strong man is bound and kicked out, he, he's wandered around through dry places and stuff. But then he comes back and he looks, oh, that person has no power. That person hasn't hadn't got his life together or her life together yet. So he goes and get about six more, seven more of his friends and come on, let's go over there and let's just do a home invasion there. And let's just set up shop here. And the scripture says that that person is left worse off than what he was beginning. And unfortunately, there are a lot of people in what we call the body of Christ in that state. You know, they because they did not do the work that was necessary. They received the prophetic word. They received this or that. And they did not do anything to follow along with that. Okay. And so I'm going to just pray now. I want you to take your salt in your hand. Those of you that are going to participate in this, whether you're camera is open or closed. You can take it in your hand. And I want you to speak to this salt and we're going to just program this salt. This specific exercise is to just uh, break off any curses, anything, word curse, anything that would seek to uh, uh, dim our star, steal our star, to uh, hinder our destiny. And so Father, right now in the name of Yeshua, we take this salt, this mineral, that uh, you created in the earth. And we understand the power of this salt and the salt covenant that you established 3000 years ago with David that became the Vedic covenant. We understand that you told the Levitical priesthood that they were not to offer up any sacrifice without 
first putting salt on it because of this powerful mineral and the transformation power of it and the preserving power of it. We thank you that David used this, King Abiah used this, and Saul, the enemy, destroyed. We thank you, Father. Now, Father, we thank you that this salt now has been transformed just as we would take water or just as we would take oil and speak into it. Now, this salt is programmed to cleanse and to break off anything, any residue of what may be from our past, from the time of birth, even till now. This simple, simple exercise, we just believe it. And Father, in the mighty name of Yeshua, all of your people that are on this platform, those that are listening, maybe by YouTube or other uh, uh, devices, other uh, programs, uh, platforms that are out there. I thank you, God, for them. And Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just take authority over every work of the enemy. I bind every force of evil, every word that's been spoken against the people of the Most High God, every word curse, everything that's been spoken against their star, everything that has come to uh, claim uh, their destiny, everything that has been done in the dark, we expose it, we bring it to the light, now in the mighty name of Yeshua and you must come forth you must come forth into the light so that you can be seen and destroyed and dealt with in the mighty name of Jesus now father we take this salt I want you to hold it in your hand in both hands and you can take it and you can just like put it on your uh, forehead or on your head on your arms or whatever and father now we wash ourselves with salt we wash ourselves with salt we wash ourselves with with salt, this for this power, this covenant, this salt covenant that is able to preserve, that is able to break yokes, that is able to break curses and anything that have been placed upon us, anything that we may have picked up by maybe being in the wrong place where we should not have been, or maybe even being in a place where you sent us and that we may have picked up. We command it now, God, to fall off, and we command every shackle, every chain, every bondage to be broken off in the name of Yeshua. Sure. And I go back in time now with every person on this platform from the time when they came out of their mother's womb or if they were delivered through C-section. And I speak right now in the name of Yeshua. And I break off everything that may have been attached to them, whether in utero or after the birth in the name of Yeshua. Every hand, every thought, every word that was spoken, every invocation, enchantment that may have been placed against them, names on the altar put into bowls of water <coughs> buried in places in the mighty name of Yeshua. I take the power away from it now in the name of Yeshua. And it can no longer work. It can no longer work. It can no longer work in the name of Jesus Christ. And we thank you for the power of the salt covenant. We thank you for that this is a covenant of life. This is a covenant of health. It's a covenant of immortality. It is a covenant of blessings. It is a covenant of abundance. And we call this forth upon every person on this platform in the mighty name of Jesus. And we thank you that the curse has been reversed. The curse is broken. Their star, I command your star to shine. Your star will shine. Your star will shine. Shine. And you that be wise will be like the stars of the firmament shining. You will shine forth with the influence and power of the Holy Spirit with the Most High God in everything that you do. You will go forth in the power and the strength of the Most High to fulfill your destiny, your mission. You will go forth to fulfill this contract that you came here with. Everything that has been deposited within you must manifest in the name of Jesus. No sickness, no disease can stop it from coming to pass. We bind it up now and we drive it out from the body in the mighty name of Yeshua. From the top of the head to the sole of your feet. Any sickness, any disease in the blood, in the organs of the body, in the bones, in the nervous system must go in the mighty name of Yeshua. And we thank you for healing and wholeness. We bind up cancer. It must be driven out in the name of Yeshua. High blood pressure, diabetes, these tumors 
must go. Heart condition con uh, must go in the mighty name of Yeshua. Uh, problems in the ears, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the throat must go in the name of Yeshua. Anything in the intestinal tract, in the stomach uh, must go. The bladder, the uterus, the uh, uh, the male uh, uh, sexual organs must go in the name of Yeshua. We take authority, God over anything that would grow that is not of you within the physical body and we command it to shrink and die by the name of Yeshua and by the power of this salt covenant. God, we drive out arthritis, rheumatism, bursitis out of the bones, out of the joints. I command all the mucus to come out from the bones, come out from between the bones that is causing this. All the mucus must dry up in the name of Yeshua. All the mucus in the gut, in the stomach and other parts must go, mucus, mucus must go, must dry up in the name of Yeshua. By the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. By the stripes of Jesus, you are made whole. Now, Father, I address this illness, this disease that most people have no clue that is a disease, the disease of aging. I address this disease of aging now in the name of Jesus. And Father, we ask for forgiveness because we have unknowingly put a spell on ourselves every year. We have unknowingly, many have unknowingly put a spell on themselves every year, causing themselves to age, causing themselves to, to get old, God. And so we rebuke that now. And Father, I pray that it would be reversed in the name of Jesus, I reverse the aging process. I activate the Saturan genes and other genes that is a part of that whole system to cause the body to, to reverse the aging process and the manifestation of the aging process on the face and the in the body and the, the, the wrinkles and all of these things that is a process that is a part of that disease. And we command it to go. We command our bodies to be at ease, our bodies to be at ease from head to toe, be at ease. And we reverse everything that is aging and we arrest it now in the name of Jesus, and we say it's so, and it can't be otherwise. It's so, and it can't be otherwise. I command health, strength, vigor, vitality to come within the bodies of every person on here. That the energy of God, those of you that can raise your hand, raise your hand, you're an antenna, and just allow the energy, this energy that's all around you and within you to flow through your body, flow through your body. I release this energy, this life force, this light that we came to flow throughout the body in the mighty name of Jesus, healing and making whole everything that is not whole bringing wholeness and deliverance on every level. I speak into the emotional body and mental body. I correct everything that is happening within the mind in the name of Jesus. Heal and reverse, cause healing of every trauma, every trauma, every trauma in the name of Jesus. Let there be an acceleration. Come back to your right mind. Come back to your right mind. Come back to your right mind in the name of Jesus. Your word says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. I thank you for peace of mind. I bind every spirit of insanity, every spirit of insanity. Go in the name of Jesus, Alzheimer, Go in the name of Jesus. Everything that has to do with brain disease and the aging of the brain must go. Confusion, distortion, go. I speak into the brain cells now. Be healed, be well, shalom, be at peace. I command the neurons to fire properly. New brain cells. In the name of Jesus, and we thank you for it. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. I speak that everyone on this platform will reclaim their destiny. Everything that the enemy in whatever form has stolen, whether it was through a relationship, 
through a job, through a business, through religion or whatever of their destiny that may have been stolen, taken, I command to be restored in Jesus name. Hallelujah. By the power of the salt covenant, by the power of the salt covenant. Thank you, Father. Everything that's sent our way must fall. It cannot stand, it cannot stand. Hallelujah. By the power of the salt covenant and his soul in the mighty name of Yeshua. His soul in the mighty name of Yeshua. It can't be otherwise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm looking 